One of the nice features in ASP.NET Web Forms is the ability to separate your HTML from your programming logic. So your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript can go in one page, and your C-sharp and VB code can go in a separate one. Makes it very clean and very easy to work with, especially if you do things such as production support. So the default option with ASP.NET and Visual Studio is to create two separate files when you add a new web form into a project. So in this example, we have form.aspx. This would have all the HTML, the server controls, the JavaScript, the CSS that might be linked in, things like that, in this page. All of my programming code would go here in form.aspx.cs, or if I was doing Visual Basic, it would be .vb. Provides a very clean approach to developing web applications. And having come from a classic ASP back in the late 90s uh, uh, scenario, which is what I did a lot of back then, this is much better, much cleaner. I get rid of that spaghetti code. Now, there may be times when you don't want that, though. You just want one page. Well, you could do that, too, if you'd like. It's not the default, but it is possible. Uh, you can use the script blocks. Put run at equal server on it give it the language, such as C-sharp or VB, and then put that script block either at the top of the page or at the bottom of the page. Then you would just put your HTML, your server controls, and the other things uh, in as normal. Visual Web, Web Developer Express doesn't provide a way to, out of the box, create this single file. But if you do have the paid versions of Visual Studio, you'll see a checkbox down at the bottom when you create a web form. And this will allow you to either do the code separation, which is the default, or do the single file. Now, as I've already mentioned, I definitely prefer the code separation and would recommend, especially if you're new to this, that you go with that approach out of the box. I think it's a good way to go, and it keeps it clean. So let's take a look at the fundamentals of doing this in Web Developer Express. In order to demonstrate code separation, I have Visual Web Developer Express already open, and I have a web application project created. I use C Sharp for the language. So out of the box, if you create a web application project, you'll get two files, about.aspx and default aspx that are web form files. So you'll notice that if I open these, if I hit the little icon here, that there's also two code files under those. Now, the first code file is your code behind, or sometimes you'll hear it called code beside file. And really, it's just your language files. And that's where you can go in and dynamically drive the HTML and controls that might be in the ASPX page. Now, this designer.cs or designer.vb, if you're doing Visual Basic file, this is something Visual Studio creates. And as you drag and drop controls onto a design surface, it'll update this file. So this is something you definitely don't want to touch. You don't want to modify it. And it kind of gives you a hint to that right here because it will regenerate this file as changes are made. But this first one, about.aspxcs and default.aspx.cs, these are your files. These are the files you can use. So to do a real simple example of this, in about.aspx, uh, you'll notice that I have some basic HTML here, and I have some server controls. We know that because of the ASP colon, and we see the run at server. So what I'm going to do is dynamically set the value of the current time to this label server control. And the label server control as a review generates span tags, but I want to dynamically drive this. So the way I can do that is I can either A, go into here and double click on it to get to here, or B, I can right click and say view code. And that's the two easiest ways. So we'll come in and we'll say output label dot text equals, I'm going to grab the current date uh, and time, and we'll do two short time string. And we'll go ahead and build that. Looks like it builds. And now to run it, we can simply right click on it and say view in browser. And once this runs, we should simply see the time, and there we have it right there. All right, now that's the default behavior that you get out of the box. Now, what happens if you would like to, to just create a separate file? So I'm going to add a new web form. So we'll right click and say Add New Item. We'll select Web Form from the top, and then I'm going to go with the default name here. We'll hit Add. 
So in this case, it just created a basic HTML type page. And you'll notice that I do have the code behind though for it. Well, in this example, I don't really want the code behind. We're going to say for whatever reason. So I'm going to delete these two files. And then I'm going to come up to the top here and delete the reference to those uh, files. So there's two things I'll remove here, the code behind and the inherits. And we'll save it. Now let me go ahead and we'll add a label. We'll do run at server because it's a server control. And now I can right click and modify this. So let me cut and paste that into my clipboard. And we'll come in. You'll notice when I right click, it takes me to the same page. Well, that's because I don't have a code behind, of course. I don't have code separation. So now what I can do is use a server side script block. Now I can put that at the top. I can put it anywhere I want, but I'm going to put it down here. So we're going to say script. We could do a type if we want. We'll say C sharp in this case. Uh, we can even do language, but I'm going to go with that. And then we'll say, and this is really key, you have to put run at server in this case. I'd like to update this label. So what I'm going to do is just borrow from the code we had in about.aspx. I'm going to grab this page load. Now page load fires when the page is ready and the, the children in the page are ready to accept instructions such as this label. So we'll go ahead and do the same thing. Now I don't have two files. So I can right click view and browser and we should see up here in the left the time. So that's an example of doing a single file. Now, as mentioned earlier, uh, I really don't ever uh, do the single file approach, but there certainly may be scenarios that, you know, for whatever reason, that's what you'd like to do and that's how you can do it. Now, with other versions of Visual Studio uh, up from Visual Web Developer Express, when you add a new item, you will get this checkbox right in this area. And so if you did want to create a single file, you can uncheck that checkbox. So that's an example of how code separation works in ASP.NET Web Forms, and it really is a nice feature to help simplify your development, keep things clean, and make maintenance easier into the future.